Edwin Meese III born December 2, 1931, is an American attorney, law professor, author and member of the Republican Party who served in official capacities within the Ronald Reagan Gubernatorial Administration 1967 the Reagan Presidential Transition Team 1980, and the Reagan White House 1981 eventually rising to hold the position of the 75th Attorney General of the United States 1985 he currently holds fellowships and chairmanships with several public policy councils and think tanks, including the Constitution Project and the Heritage Foundation. He is also a distinguished visiting fellow with the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. He currently sits on the National Advisory Board of Center for Urban Renewal and Education. He is on the board of directors of the Federalist Society for Law and Public Policy Studies. He has served on the board of Cornerstone Closed End Funds. Early life and education Meese was born in Oakland, California, the eldest of four sons born to Leone and Edwin Meese, Jr. He was raised in a practicing Lutheran family, of German descent. His father was an Oakland city government official, president of the Zion Lutheran Church, and served 24 years in the nonpartisan office of treasurer of Alameda County. At age 10, Meese published along with his brothers a mimeographed neighborhood newspaper, The Weekly Herald, and used the proceeds to buy a war bond. The young Meese also rode a bicycle on a paper route and worked in a drugstore. At Oakland High School, Meese was involved in the Junior State of America and led his high school debate team to statewide championships. He was recognized as valedictorian, class of 1949. Two weeks prior to graduation, he was accepted to Yale University and granted a scholarship. Meese served as president of the Yale Political Union, chairman of the Conservative Party, and chairman of the Yale Debating Association. Meese made the dean's list, and graduated with a Bachelor of Arts of Political Science in 1953. <laughs> <laughs> Military service Meese became a member of ROTC upon enrollment at Yale, and upon graduation he obtained a commission in the United States Army as a second lieutenant. He spent 24 months at Fort Sill near Lawton, Oklahoma. Meese gained experience in logistics, conducting installation and operations of the 240mm Howitzer M1. Meese completed active duty in 1956 and continued in the United States Army Reserve, specializing in military intelligence. Meese retired from the Army Reserve as a colonel in 1984. Early career Meese returned to California, obtaining a law degree from the University of California, Berkeley School of Law, where he was a state moot court champion. He graduated in 1958 and accepted a position with the District Attorney's Office of Alameda County as a law clerk. While there, he worked under District Attorney J. Frank Coakley. He also worked with future DAD Lowell Jensen. Jensen was engaged in developing a case management software program known as Delight. Meese prosecuted felony cases while maintaining a private practice on nights and weekends, focusing on civil law. During this service, he first drew the attention of Republican State Senator Donald Grunsky, who would later recommend him to Governor-elect Ronald Reagan. In 1959 he married his high school sweetheart Ursula Herrick, daughter of Oakland's postmaster. <laughs> California Governor's Office Meese joined Ronald Reagan's staff in 1967. He served as Legal Affairs Secretary from 1967 to 1968 and as Executive Assistant and Chief of Staff to Governor Reagan from 1969 to 1974. Despite his later well-known fondness for Reagan, Meese was initially reluctant to accept the appointment because he thought of himself as nonpartisan. I was not particularly interested. Meese was known for his unique ability to explain complex ideas to Reagan in a way that often mirrored Reagan's own speaking style and mannerisms. That made Reagan biographer Lou Cannon refer to Meese as Reagan's geographer. After being named Reagan's chief of staff, Meese convinced his predecessor's deputy, Mike Deaver, to stay on with him, beginning a partnership that would last more than two decades. 
For his role in Reagan's office, Mies earned reluctant praise from across the aisle. Bob Moretti, a Democrat and former Democratic Speaker of the Assembly, said, Were I in the governor's seat, I would want someone like Ed Meese on my side. Berkeley riots As Reagan's chief of staff, Meese was instrumental in the decision to crack down on student protesters at People's Park in Berkeley, California, on May 15, 1969. Mies was widely criticized for escalating the official response to the People's Park protest, during which law enforcement officers killed one student protester and injured hundreds of others, including bystanders. Mies advised Reagan to declare a state of emergency in Berkeley, contrary to the recommendation of the Berkeley City Council. That resulted in a two-week occupation of People's Park by National Guard troops. The first governor to turn to Meese for advice on riot control was Democrat Edmund Pat Brown, who first telephoned Meese seeking advice on how to best handle the situation. I told him, Meese said, that the people in that building should be arrested and taken out of there. I told him that if they were allowed to stay, there would be another mob scene, even bigger, the next day. Meese and Deputy District Attorney Lowell Jensen later served as co-counsels in the trial of Berkeley demonstrators. Meese was recognized as one of five outstanding young men of California by the California Junior Chamber of Commerce for his role in countering the Berkeley demonstrators. Meese's role in quelling the riots at UC Berkeley have been identified by critics and supporters as an example of a conservative law enforcement philosophy at work. Topic: <laughs> Industry and Academia. From January 1975 to May 1976, Meese served as Vice President for Administration of Roar Industries in Chula Vista, California. He left Roar to enter private law practice in San Diego County, California. After receiving a grant from the Sarah Schaaf Foundation, Meese developed what he called, a plan for a law school center for criminal justice policy and management. The plan was accepted by the University of San Diego, a private Catholic school. From the fall of 1977 to January 1981, Meese served as professor of law at the university, where he also directed the Center for Criminal Justice Policy and Management. During the same time, Meese served as vice chairman of California's Organized Crime Control Commission and participated in the California Bar Association's criminal law section. Reagan presidency. Topic. Presidential campaign and transition Following the Iowa caucuses, Meese joined the 1980 Reagan presidential campaign full-time as chief of staff in charge of day-to-day -day campaign operations and senior issues advisor. After the 1980 election, Meese headed Reagan's transition effort. At the advice of Meese, Reagan secretly allowed his campaign to establish a transition office to avoid difficulties similar to those faced by the Nixon administration in its own transition. Ed had an uncanny ability to look down the road, said Penn James, assistant to the president for presidential personnel. Meese's presidential transition team employed more than 1,000 individuals, with 311 being paid in federal funds, 331 working for a token. One dollar, and the rest serving as volunteers. When accounting for inflation, the Reagan transition team spent less money than the Carter transition team, $1.75 million versus $1.78 million. Topic Counselor to the President On November 17, 1980, Meese and James Baker held a meeting to divide their list of White House responsibilities, since both saw the potential for future conflict because of their positions being somewhat similar in nature. The one-page memorandum listed Mises' responsibilities as, Counselor to the President for Policy with Cabinet Rank, Member Super Cabinet Executive Committee in absence of the President and VP preside over meetings, participate as a principal in all meetings of full Cabinet, coordination and supervision of responsibilities of the Secretary to the Cabinet, asterisk coordination and supervision of work of the Domestic Policy Studies and the National Security Council, with Baker coordination and supervision of work of OM, C, CE, 
CEQ, Trade Rep and S&T, asterisk participation as principal in all policy group meetings, attend any meeting which Prez attends, with his consent, Mies became counselor to the president, who appointed him as a member of both his cabinet and the National Security Council from 1981 to 1985. On Monday, September 14, 1981, Mies chaired the first White House discussion of what would become Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative (SDI), the missile defense program. Mies served as a liaison to the conservative evangelical community, arranging for meetings between social conservative leaders and the president. Mies was lauded by social conservatives for his address to the Congress on the Bible in March 1982, when he said, Someone has estimated that throughout the course of history man has adopted over four billion laws. It seems to me, with all that effort, we haven't improved one iota on the Ten Commandments. Near the end of Reagan's presidency, Mises' involvement in the Iran Contra affair as a counselor and friend to Reagan was scrutinized by the Independent Council for Iran Contra Matters, which stated in its official report that Mises' knowledge of the 1985 Hawk transaction raised serious legal questions. Mies was considered a powerful and influential figure inside the White House. Former Reagan advisor and journalist David Gergen said, he's a tremendously influential and highly valued advisor to the president who advises on issues all across the board. He's one of the men who has known the president so long and so well he's become almost an alter ego of Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Comments on hunger in America Mies created a storm of controversy," in December 1983 after his responses to questions about hunger in America. In response to a question about balancing spending cuts against the need to feed hungry children, he said that he had seen no authoritative evidence that children in America were going hungry and that some of the allegations are purely political. When asked about soup kitchens, he said that some people are going to soup kitchens voluntarily. I know we've had considerable information that people go to soup kitchens because the food is free and that that's easier than paying for it." Democratic leaders and social welfare activists called his comments, "...disgraceful," an outrage, "...unkind," "...mean-spirited," and "...absolutely ridiculous." Tip O'Neill, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, compared Mies to Ebenezer Scrooge. Shortly after, Mies offered a tongue-in-cheek defense of Scrooge, saying that he had his faults, but he wasn't unfair to anyone, and that he suffered from a bad press. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney General Reagan nominated Mies to be William French Smith's successor as Attorney General on January 23, 1984. For more than a year, Democrats repeatedly charged Meese with unethical conduct to bar his confirmation as Attorney General, including a report by Archibald Cox to the Senate on Meese's lack of ethical sensitivity and blindness to abuse of position. However, he was finally confirmed by a vote of 63 to 31, with more opposition than any other Attorney General nominee had received since the 1920s. Mies became Attorney General in February 1985. In 1985, Mies received Government Executive Magazine's annual award for excellence in management for his service in this role. Topic: <laughs> Bechtel scandal. In the mid-1980s, there was a federal investigation into Mises' connections and alleged financial improprieties related to his efforts to help the Bechtel Corporation build an Iraqi pipeline. The pipeline was to extend from Iraq to Jordan and was negotiated by Mies, Shimon Peres, Bruce Rappaport, Robert C. McFarlane, and others. The report of Special Prosecutor James C. McKay cleared Mies of criminal wrongdoing but criticized him for ethical lapses, especially regarding bribes to Israel not to attack an Iraqi oil pipeline that benefited associates of the Attorney General. <laughs> WedTech scandal In February 1987, James C. McKay was named independent counsel in the WedTech case. The investigation centered on actions Mies took that benefited him and his longtime friend and former lawyer, E. Robert Wallach. McKay looked into Mies's involvement, while Attorney General, in negotiations involving the company Wedtech, E. 
Robert Wallach worked as a lobbyist for the company and sought help from Mies on Wedtech contract matters. McKay never prosecuted or sought indictment of Mies, but in his official report, which is still confidential, he was highly critical of Mies's ethics and urged further investigation of Mies's role in that scandal and others such as Mies's efforts to help Bechtel Corporation. Mies described it as a full vindication. While Mies was never convicted of any wrongdoing, he resigned in 1988 when the Independent Council delivered the report on Wedtech. Prior to his departure, several top Justice Department officials resigned in protest of what they and others viewed as improper acts by the Attorney General. Reagan publicly voiced support for Mies in his role as Attorney General, during a press conference, If Ed Mies is not a good man, there are no good men. That was in response to questions about his actions at the Justice Department. Topic. Mies Report On May 21, 1984, Reagan announced his intention to appoint the Attorney General to study the effect of pornography on society. The Attorney General's Commission on Pornography, often called the Mies Report, convened in the spring of 1985 and published its findings in July 1986. The Mies Report advised that pornography was in varying degrees harmful. Following the release of the report, guidelines of the Mies-led Department of Justice were modified to enable the government to file multiple cases in various jurisdictions at the same time which eroded some of the markets for pornography. <laughs> <laughs> Drug control policy As Attorney General, Mies chaired the National Drug Policy Board, which coordinated with Nancy Reagan's Just Say No. National Anti-Drug Educational Campaign. One of Mises' innovations was to seek the cooperation of drug-producing countries. One of our most effective weapons against drug traffickers, Mies wrote in his autobiography, was to confiscate the assets of their criminal activity, such as expensive autos, yachts, businesses and homes. To make this technique even more effective, we shared the proceeds with cooperating local law enforcement agencies to enhance their drug-fighting activities. Topic Supreme Court views In 1985 Mies delivered a speech calling for a jurisprudence of original intent and criticizing the Supreme Court for straying from the original intention of the U.S. Constitution. Justices William J. Brennan and John Paul Stevens disagreed with Mies publicly later that year. The dispute foreshadowed the contentious Robert Bork hearings of 1987. Mies was well known for his opposition to the Miranda warning ruling by the Supreme Court requiring a suspect's rights to be read to him before he is questioned by authorities. U.S. News & World Report, you criticize the Miranda ruling, which gives suspects the right to have a lawyer present before police questioning. Shouldn't people, who may be innocent, have such protection? Mies, suspects who are innocent of a crime should. But the thing is, you don't have many suspects who are innocent of a crime. That's contradictory. If a person is innocent of a crime, then he is not a suspect. Topic: <inaudible> Iraq Study Group. In May 2006, Mies was named a member of the bipartisan Iraq Study Group by Group Co-Chairman James Baker III and Lee H. Hamilton, commissioned to assess and report on the contemporary status of the Iraq War. Mies co-authored the group's final December 2006 report. Topic: <laughs> Fellowships and Honors. Mies serves on the boards of several institutions. Mies has held the Ronald Reagan Chair in Public Policy at the Heritage Foundation since 1988, when he joined the think tank. It is the only policy chair in the United States officially named for the 40th president. He is also chairman of Heritage's Center for Legal and Judicial Studies, founded in 2001 to advance conservative views about the Constitution, legal principles, and their impact on public policy. Mies is currently the second vice chairman of Landmark Legal Foundation, a conservative non profit legal group. Mies serves as an adjunct fellow at the Discovery Institute and serves on the board of directors of the Junior State of America. Mies is also on the board of directors for the Capital Research Center, a conservative think tank devoted to the research 
Research of Nonprofit Groups. Me served on the Executive Committee 1994 and as President 1996 of the Council for National Policy (CNP), and he served as co-chairman of the Constitution Project's Bipartisan Sentencing Committee. Me served two terms as a member of the Board of Visitors of George Mason University from 1996 to 2004. From 1998 to 2004, he served as rector chairman of the board. For his lifetime of service and leadership, Meese was named the first ever honorary Reagan Fellow of Eureka College Eureka, Illinois, at a ceremony in Washington, D.C. in 2008. Recognizing Meese as a model for young people, the honor was given on behalf of the Reagan Fellows Program President Ronald Reagan established at his own alma mater in 1982. Mies is a charter member of the Ronald W. Reagan Society of Eureka College and a featured speaker at the Reagan and the Midwest academic conference held on campus to launch the Reagan Centennial in 2011. In 2017 Mies became a veteran companion of the Military Order of Foreign Wars. Mies serves as a member of the Board of Directors of the Mercatus Center at George Mason University, a non-profit market-oriented research, education, and outreach think tank located on George Mason University's Arlington campus. <laughs> Books and film Edwin Meese has authored or co-authored a number of books on government, judiciary and civics, including a Familiar Exposition of the Constitution of the United States, Bicentennial Edition 1986. The Great Debate, Interpreting Our Written Constitution 1986. With Reagan, The Inside Story 1992. Regnery Gateway, 0 522 Making America Safer, What Citizens and Their State and Local Officials Can Do to Combat Crime 2000. Defending the American Homeland 2002. Leadership, Ethics and Policing, Challenges for the 21st Century 2004. The Heritage Guide to the Constitution 2005. ISBN 1-59698-001-X Judicial Tyranny, The New Kings of America Contributing Author, Amerisearch, 2005. ISBN 0-9753455-6-7 Edwin Meese has been a subject of many TV documentaries. Documentaries in which he personally appears include In the Face of Evil 2004 William F. Buckley, Right from the Start 2008 Hippies 2007 I Want Your Money 2010 Topic. See also Attorney General's Commission on Pornography Citizens for the Republic Garcia Mir v. Meese